wait for that truck to pass by. Any second now. You can do it. Okay. Lesson one, lines, ellipses, and boxes. Ellipses. And we're not watching these videos because you can do that on your own. That would be ridiculous. <clears throat> what is an ellipse? So what is an ellipse? Is it just a fancy word for an oval? Ellipses are extremely important and notoriously annoying to draw. You'll find them all over the place in mechanical drawings. Cars, spaceships, tanks, machines, trains. Anything man-made will probably make extensive use of ellipses. They're so prevalent because they allow us to, with relative accuracy, represent a circle as it sits in 3D space. If you take any circular object, a coin for instance, and turn it this way and that, you'll notice that the 2D shape of your eyes actually, your eyes actually see, isn't always going to be a circle. It will, however, generally be ellipsoid. Is my stream not updating? Hold on, I'm gonna refresh that real quick. Yeah, it was just my stupid um, uh, creator channel, whatever. Okay, anyways. The anatomy of an ellipse. An ellipse has several specific properties. Its scale, the overall size of the ellipse, its orientation, the angle at which it is positioned, its degree, effectively the width of the narrower dimension of the ellipse. You'll also see here that there are two axes, the major axis, which defines the widest span of the ellipse, and the minor axis, which defines the narrowest span of the ellipse, which is also its degree. There's a picture. Take it in. These two axes run perpendicular to one another. The major axis does not and will never matter. The minor axis is extremely important, however. That can be a little difficult to grasp at first due to their infuriatingly unintuitive naming scheme. So we don't care about majors, we care about minors. Oh look, a picture. Oh, some ellipses. Okay. More reading. The degree. This is going to become quite important as we get into the next lesson, but I think it's important to introduce this concept now. If you take a circular coin or some other similar object like a CD, who even owns those, and hold it up so it faces so its face points towards you, you're going to see a circle. It's still an ellipse. A circle is an ellipse after all, but the gr degree of this ellipse, literally measured in degrees, is going to be 90 degrees. That is the angle between your vision, like an arrow coming straight out of your face, and the surface of the circle. As this disc or coin turns, however, the degree of the ellipse gets smaller, and therefore the ellipse gets narrower and narrower, until finally you're looking at the edge of the object, or an ellipse with a degree of zero. As shown with the image above, from the far left is 90 degrees, and the far right is zero degrees, so that's what this is. Hooray. Okay. The minor axis. Now, while the major axis is largely relevant, the minor axis is critical when we start thinking about 3D space. The reason it's so important is that while the minor axis represents something in 2D space, the narrowest span across the ellipse, it also represents something important in 3D space as well. In 3D, the minor axis represents a line, or in math terms, a vector, that points straight off the surface of the circle. It runs perfectly perpendicular to that surface. This is incredibly useful when drawing cylinders and other ellipse-based 3D forms. In a cylinder, you can imagine that there is a straight spine that connects the circles on either end. This spine is the minor axis, which runs perpendicular to both circles and helps us to align them correctly. If their minor axes don't match up, then you'd end up with a tube with one end sheared off at an angle rather than straight across. And then here's the 
here's this picture here illustrating such oh look that was relatively short it's a miracle merry birthday everybody